Welcome everyone to uh, Talks with Dave. Dave, I always appreciate the ability to connect with you. Um, you have been in this profession for a while. You, you, you pack a lot of wisdom. So it's always great to be able to connect on a quarterly basis and get your pulse on, on death care, uh, the things that are happening in the space. There's a lot of changes that are happening now, but before we get into it, give us an introduction to you and, and who you are, if there's one or two people that don't know. Hey, Ryan, thanks for uh, having me on again. Good to see you. You always have uh, you know, such a cool outfit on. Here I am in like this <laughs> drab looking golf shirt and stuff. You know, we're, uh, we're traveling this time of year too, like a lot of people are. But um, uh, the unconference, uh, just to kind of go back a second, that was really great. I'm looking forward to more yeah, of that. You. And I think thank everybody's going to kind of have to get used to that. Um, you know, we have some interesting uh, dynamics going on in funeral service today where it makes a lot of sense to have this. Obviously, in person is um, is probably best in some cases, but yeah. I think that that serves a, a really great purpose. It, you know, not okay. only saves money, but you can get great information. The flow of the information can be more flexible. So I think it's uh, I think it's a good thing. So good job for you. Thank you. But anyways, um, sure. um, been an undertaker since 1986. Um, undertaker, that word comes about because of people taking under others' responsibilities at the time of death. So I kind of like the word undertaker. Most people think it has something to do with taking people underground, um, but it doesn't have to do with that. But um, anyways, I'm the owner of Inman Shipping at Eagles Wings Air and Travel Plan by Inman. Um, I was a fourth generation funeral director. Um, I love the business. I love my colleagues in the business. And so um, you know, my uh, my interest is uh, is is all the people and making sure uh, decisions are made with the right information. So, you know, once again, thanks for having me on. Good to see you. Yeah, you, you bet, you bet. So, like you you have been through a lot of change in death care uh, since 1986. You've had your hands in a lot of different things. What's the pulse that you have right now? Just changes that are happening in death care and, and what's happening in the space in general. Yeah. Um, it's, it's interesting what's going on in, as far as um, inflation and the numbers. And I know inflation is kind of a, a hot topic right now because we've just went through, um, you know, some significant increases in the CPI over the last 18 months. And uh, it's, it's showing up. Um, the numbers are a little lagging. And I think most people probably know that. Um, Johnson Consulting just came out with their 118 page analysis of funeral service, you know, based on surveys that they received. And it's very nice that uh, Jake Johnson to share that with uh, the funeral service community, because I think people really need to know about things. And a couple of things really stuck out. Um, he, he pegged the, um, the, the area of interest between 2011 and 2022. And, um, and for the funeral service professionals out there, um, going back to 2011, the, um, the average total at need traditional price was 7437 And then flash forward to 2022, it's 89.35. And that's a 20% increase. And that sounds like, well, hey, 20% isn't bad. You know, my pre-need accounts, you know, they go up, you know, hopefully something similar to that. But uh, the CPI during that same period went up 35.64%. So in, in 10 years, um, we're looking at a, at, a, at a deficit of about 15%. And so how do you make that up? Um, you know, to, and to obtain you know, your same standard of living, give the same standard of service to the people uh, that you're taking care of on a day-to-day -day basis with funerals. And um, everybody needs to be very cognizant about adding services, making sure your service charge is at the right price, I know there's a tremendous amount of competition out there with people discounting, people selling uh, products um, online. Um, you know, you got to consider packaging. There's any number of things that you can consider. But, um, you know, that CPI increase is 35.64% during the 10 years going back from 22. And we all know what happened in the last um, year and a half. And it's probably even higher than that. It's probably closer to 40%. So, you know, we need to do things like add more products to what we're selling. Um, we need to, um, like I said, make sure the service charges are right. Caskets, we obviously can't probably keep the same markups that we had in the past because that's a commodity. And any commodity, as we know, can be sold on the Internet with somebody with a very low cost structure. So um, not to ring the alarm bells because 
you know, things on the other hand with the satisfaction, satisfaction looks pretty good in most cases. There's some, you know, areas of satisfaction that have gone down a little bit, but um, overall, um, I think our funeral service professionals are serving the consumers very well. Um, one of the things that you might want to consider, you might thought I would come to this conclusion, but um, on pre-need sales, our pre-need sales across the United States have gone down um, mm -hmm. as a percentage of at-need cases. In, in 2013, the average pre-need to at-need ratio, so if you have 100 calls, pre-need to at-need ratio would be if you, have, if you do 20 pre-arrangements. So if you do 20 pre-arrangements, you have a 20% you know, pre-need to at-need ratio. So that ratio in 2013 was 21%. And in 2022, it went down to 12%. That's a pretty significant drop. You know, and it kind of, it, it really, I was really surprised to see the pre-need that need ratio is going down. Um, I would have expected uh, people to take a more proactive approach to pre-need because um, pre-need is about locking up future business. Now, in some places you can shift that business. If you're a consumer, you can shift from the guy you did a pre-arrangement with one day and take it to somebody else. Uh, that, that is a possibility. It does happen. But once somebody commits to your firm, as far as prearrangement goes, they're probably going to stay there in majority of the cases. I would say probably over 75% sure. of the cases. Now, if something catastrophic happens with the funeral home, with a change of ownership, sure. something bad happened, um, like maybe an issue with a cremation and it got in the newspaper, um, the majority of the people are going to stay with you. So pre-need going forward is, um, is pretty important. And, and one of the products that we have is a travel plan, and it is not unlike other travel plans out there, but um, it pays a significant commission. And one thing, when sales go down and you don't have the pre need nat need ratio you did before, it's going to be more difficult to keep people that represent your funeral home selling pre-arrangement plans. And so the, the travel plan helps bolster the commission to the, the pre-need salespeople. And, the pre -need, and your pre-need is your future. A lot of it is yeah. your future. And, you know, whether yeah. you're insurance or you're doing trust, you know, with trust, it's probably a more solid deal. And in some states, it's very difficult to transfer. In Indiana, it's very simple to transfer. So, you know, there's a ratio that you have to consider for that as well. So uh, in regard to the, the premium net need ratio that we had talked about that's fallen off a bit over the last number of years, um, we need to supplement for for the loss of, of sales and the, and the downturn. So the travel plan is a significant increase in what your, your salespeople or the people representing your firm um, can make as far as income, because we know that right now in funeral service, funeral directors are hard to find and good pre-need professionals are hard to find. And so we need to make sure we keep them economically fortified. And the travel plan is a great way to do that. The travel plan commission can be split up between the counselor and the funeral home any way you want. And um, and then when you're picking a travel plan, you got to make sure that you pick the right one. You know, I'm an undertaker. I've been in this business a long time. Um, we have the fulfillment network. So a lot of, if you see other travel plans out there, sometimes they have to call into our, our network to fulfill their pre-needs because they don't have a network. They have to find somebody that's not been vetted. Our funeral directors are vetted. The people that are out there are embalming bodies on our behalf as a result of a travel plan have been vetted. They're required to report to us. They're required to find our, our, or go through our embalming standards to make sure things turn out on the receiving end for the funeral director the way they expect. Um, and, and there was one other thing I wanted to mention about the, um, the, uh, the report that, that uh, Jake Johnson put out. And that's about the, um, the influx of, of immigrants that we have coming into the country and the different ethnicities and um, if we're not paying attention to those in your market share, um, you really need to make a push for it. You need to make sure all your brochures are in various languages. Make sure you hire a, a consulting service for translation. They're very inexpensive. You want to make sure you have that out on your website and available for people. Um, th and those things are, are, are a big plus because the immigrant population in the United States is growing substantially. And if you're not reaching out to those communities, that could be another reason that market shares falls. Wow. Yeah, it's, it's such good insight. And uh, I appreciate you breaking some of that down for us. Like the numbers are interesting. Like I, you know, when I see the the difference in, in inflation versus what's happened with pricing and in, in death care. Um, yeah, that's, 
you said you don't want to sound the alarm, but that's something definitely that we we have to pay attention to. Um, the pre need ratio, you know, I think you're you hit the nail on the head. It's hard to find good help. It's hard to find good funeral directors. It's hard to find good counselors. And so, in the business, we've got to do what we can to keep those those counselors happy, those funeral professionals happy, and you know, anytime you can add more money or commission to a pre-need for that counselor, you're going to be able to keep them a little happier. So um, Dave, you know, there's so much information that I always get from you and wisdom that I get from you. If someone wants to connect with you, where, where can they find you? How can they engage with you? Uh, you're going to be at NFDA, I, I assume, in, in September. Yeah, yeah, we'll be there for the uh, the convention in Las Vegas. It's normally a big draw. Hopefully, there'll be a lot of people. Yeah. Uh, if, if you like golf, even if you don't like golf, guess what? This year it's a Top Golf, so you don't have to be a great golfer, no golf etiquette or anything like that. So I would suggest you show up. Found Funeral Service Foundation is the one that puts it on. Right now, the numbers are looking really good. A lot of people I think are going to come that wouldn't have otherwise come if it was regular golf course. But Top Golf, everybody has fun. You don't even need a golf if you don't want to. So you can participate that way. It's awesome. It's awesome. Great. Well, thank you so much, Dave, for uh, spending some time as you travel kind of with your family to connect yeah. with us, man. So thank you so yeah. much. I appreciate so, yeah, that. You know, we're traveling and, uh, you know, we have travel plans and, and you know, That's and right. our, the in travel plan by Inman, our plans are backed up by insurance. Each individual okay. plan has backing of insurance. And that's really important because you don't want to have a long-term problem down the road. If you're 45 or 50 years old, out there selling travel plans now. You want to make sure that it's not a problem when you're ready to retire. That's it. That's it. Awesome, Dave. Thank you so much for uh, connecting. And until next time, yeah. be safe. We'll see you. See you, brother.